What up, y'all? I'm gonna give y'all a raw reaction. Look, it's the next day. Um, and I said I'm gonna start filming. I'm, if I think it, I'm gonna film it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, me and two Monster and our members were at the office last night to about 4 a.m. Uh, so shout out to Devon, Dash the Artist, and Artie, aka Young Toro. What y'all doing? Wrapping cables. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. It done. So, why? Because somebody didn't know what an XLR cable was. I, I did not. <laughs> I really did not. XLR cables are commonly used for what? Microphones. Which is pretty dope, man, to just be able to have like local Monster and r members that are like students that have came to classes and producers and I'm actually helping to develop, which is dope. So like, I look forward to you guys actually seeing me interact with them in the videos. It's gonna be super lit, you know what I'm saying? So we were in the office doing what we do, um, having fun, just being creative, being innovative, you know, pulling out music equipment, you know, like pressing the limits with plugins, um, I got like a new mic preamp and a new EQ. So we just testing them out on like different sounds, different synthesizers, different pianos. Like so we got these keyboards right here. We got a controller, we got an EQ, and we gonna unbox this guy right here. And we gonna hook this up to this. And then we're gonna hook one of these up to this. And then we're gonna send this to that and we're gonna see how it sounds. I really look forward to showing y'all that, man. I really do. We came across a couple of YouTube channels that I never even heard of before. Uh, we were in the studio going through beats and Devon was an FL studio producer and Artie is a Ableton producer. They brought up this YouTube channel called Internet Money and I had never heard of it, you know what I'm saying? So I looked them up, we looked them up online because they were talking about how like everybody is watching internet money, all like producers. So we took, we typed them up, we looked at it. I watched like three or four of their videos and I just sat there just like, so what are my thoughts? Like what, what, are, what were my thoughts from watching these videos? First off, you gotta respect people like that. You gotta respect. I, I don't know the full story on internet money. I literally watched three videos and it was just, it was just a YouTube channel and it's just like a group of guys that make music online. You know what I'm saying? So I woke up this morning and I was just trying to process my thoughts. So like, what did I really think about that YouTube channel? And I really look forward to like looking at other YouTube channels because as long as I've been on YouTube, I do not watch music, anything related. I don't watch music videos. I don't watch music tutorials. I don't watch music on YouTube. I don't come to YouTube to learn. I go to YouTube to like be entertained. I use YouTube like TV. So I watch basketball highlights. I watch, you know, sports interviews. I watch like athletes. I watch gaming channels. I watch I watch the, I watch Fortnite streams, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, I used to, but I don't watch producer stuff, music stuff, because I come from the industry. I physically did it. You know what I'm saying? If I need to learn something, I got OGs and mentors and some of the best producers in the industry. So like, I'm not gonna go to YouTube to learn. I don't go to YouTube to learn. If I have a question right now about mixing, I'm friends with some of the best mixing engineers, so I'm gonna call them or text them to get the answers. If I have a question about recording, about Pro Tools, about Logic, I'm gonna call one of my homies. If I if I need drum kits, I'm gonna call one of my producer homies to get a drum kit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna go to the internet. And it's not because anything is wrong with the internet, but I got into music before the internet. And I've had a successful career in the music industry as a producer. And part of having a successful career in the music industry as a producer is you build relationships. You have a network, like you have resources that you can tap into. Like 
you, I was a student and you know what I'm saying? Like I was an intern, so I had to work my way up. I was working in big recording studios, cleaning up dog pits for like celebrities, you know what I'm saying? Like going to go get Chinese food for Chris Brown, cleaning up Ariana Grande's dog pits, like taking out trash and recording studio sessions and like going to go get food and get fire, watering plants, like all of that type of stuff. I did that for years. And I had to, I had to earn that. I had to earn my right to be a professional in this industry, man. Like working in studios and Timberland coming into the studio session and then Timberland leaving for the night and us going on his computer and taking all of his drum kits. We used to do that type of stuff. You know, the dream tricky store going in their sessions and ripping their drum kits. But that when you got the opportunity to work at one of the best recording studios in LA with these celebrities, man, like you, you're curious and that's just what you do. So it's no disrespect. This is how we're going to approach this, man. It's no disrespect to none of these young internet producers that are doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? So to go back to internet money, my first thought was like, yo, these beats are dope, but this is not how you should inspire other producers. I can't really say anything negative about these dudes because they're doing it. You know what I'm saying? You got to respect someone that can do it because all of my homies, I could easily, let's look at it like this. I could easily say their, their beats are not dope, right? But am I putting beats online? No. Okay, then shut up then. You know what I'm saying? I could say that all of my producer homies are killing every single producer that is on YouTube sharing their music. But every single producer homie that I know that would kill any YouTube producer is ironically afraid to share their music to the world. And until real people start to step up to share their music or their craft with aspiring producers, musicians, and artists, then we really don't have a right to speak on the online producer community, the people that are giving back, the people that are that do have a following, that have put in the work on YouTube, that had that are sharing their music online. So regardless to what someone on the outside can say about someone that is doing it. We really don't have a right to speak on it because they're doing something that we don't have the balls to do. And after seeing their videos, I was just like, yo, this is what producers are inspired by. OK, that's cute. And, you know, Artie and Devon were like, yo, if you ever put your music online or any of your producer homies ever put their music online, it would be a rap. And they're right. But will we do it? That's the question. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like. Young producers don't know. Like if you were a young producer and you're in the middle of, you know, we got we got Monster in our members in Hungary. We have Monster in our members in the Netherlands and in, in, in Finland and in Australia. And y'all can't go to a recording studio or get a job at a recording studio. or Y'all don't have producer peers. And a lot of y'all don't have support. And a lot of y'all don't know people in the music industry that can give you advice. So you don't have people that you can call to get drum kits from. Y'all don't have the same privileges and opportunities that someone like me has, which is why we don't feel a need to put our music on YouTube is because we don't need to do it. So these kids that have these YouTube channels with hundreds of thousands of subscribers all over the world and they're giving their content their however they choose to, maybe that is what they need to be successful, man. So if you do have an opinion on their grind, it's really considered hating. And this is what I thought about last night and this morning. It's like, yo, you can't hate on these dudes that are grinding on YouTube and are building followings with all due respect, even if it is devaluing the producer community, which it is. It's just certain things that should not be shown online because when producers watch channels like that, you take away from the exploration and discovery mode within yourself. When producers are online making full beats from start to finish, showing you the workflow, showing you the drum selection, showing you the mistakes, which is dope to look into that world, but it is devaluing the entire producer community because you guys are not tapping in to your own create creativity. You're not driving yourself crazy with trying to figure things out. You're not working through things and like it's becoming easier and easier and easier and easier, which is why so many more producers are getting into it, which is fine. Now, when producers make a commitment to get into it, the first thing you commit is time. 
You know what I'm saying? And then if you care or if you, I don't want to say that because I was investing in music equipment when I was 15. So it don't matter whether, it don't matter whether you're 15 or, or 35, you should look to invest first time and in money, resources into adding to your producer abilities, your capabilities. So whether you're investing in equipment, whether you're investing in computers, um, monitors, headphones, controllers, sounds, VSTs, plugins, um, studio time, working with artists, like you should look to invest into that. But when you can literally go onto your computer, download a program because some kid is showing you exactly how to download a program for free with all of the sounds and plugins, which requires no investment. All you need is a computer and you can download, get your whole computer set up. And then you got another producer that will show you how to make a beat from start to finish. And then you got another video that'll show you how to submit all your music to record labels and A&Rs to get your music placed. And producers are actually starting to get their music placed. Why would you not? Why would you not follow that path? Why would you not? And the music industry will always be wide open, which is dope. And people like me are not worried because we are good regardless. But that side of the producer community affects our side of the producer community. And if you look to be on this side of the producer community one day, you will not have a producer community by the time you get there because of how you guys are moving. And what I mean by that is like 10 years ago, if someone wanted to buy a beat, it was 12.5. Easy. 8.5 to 12.5. That's what you started off at. If you ended up selling a beat for 5,000, okay, that was cool, but you got ripped off. Today, you're barely getting 500 for an exclusive. Stems, singles. All these big time producers that got millions and millions of streams are not getting paid. They're getting money, but they're not getting paid. It's not what they should be getting paid. A lot of these producers are doing free placements. They're doing 500. I don't care what they're showing you online. I don't care what paperwork or what screenshots they're showing you. It's cap, man. It's cap. There's certain things that I just can't share. I, there's certain things I just can't share. We've gotten a couple placements over the past few years from some big industry artists, and they're not paying beats. The money is still there, but the industry is not paying for beats because why would they pay me five thousand when they can go get a fifty dollar beat from somebody online? And you're happy that you get that opportunity, but what happens when you continue to do music when you're 25, 30, 40, and you're getting fifty dollars per beat? You know what I'm saying? So look, there are pros and cons to the young producer community. And I actually like the beats that I heard on this internet money channel, but I just feel like they move in the wrong way. And the way they're moving is more beneficial to themselves than it is to the entire producer community because they don't realize the influence and impact that they have on other people that will aspire to do the same thing or follow their steps. And until we step up to do something about it, we have to allow it to be what it is. So I promise y'all, I promise y'all, I'm going to do everything in my power to get some of the world's dopest producers, my homeboys, on YouTube. Every single one of them. I'm going to be calling these fools, trying to get them on YouTube so that we can show y'all what real music is about. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, man, much respect to a lot of these young producers, man. Much respect to them. You know what I'm saying? Um... A lot of these young producers, I was watching this interview with Young Chop the other day, and he was just talking about how like Chief Keith, Chief Keith blew up, you know, a few years ago and he produced all of the songs and and the guy asked him, like, yo, did y'all do this on your own or did y'all have mentors? He was like, Nah, we didn't have no mentors. We did it all on our own. We figured it all out ourselves. So if the young generation don't have the mentors to help guide and develop them. What do you expect them to do? Just sit at home and just hope for one and not do anything. If you can get on the internet and make a move, regardless of whether it's a good move or bad move, if it, if it helps to elevate your current situation, how can you be mad at that? And so instead of us being mad at the young guys that are doing what they know and what they can, regardless of what they have, we can't be mad at them. We got to celebrate that 
but then also contribute to the influence of the communities. And that's what I look forward to doing, man. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Devon and Artie for showing me internet money. And I really look forward to these dudes, my guys, Monster a &R. As much as they learn from me, I look forward to learning from them. I don't care about what y'all want to show me. I don't care about the comments and what y'all want to show me. I, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in learning from my guys, you know, the A-team. So shout out to the whole A-team while we talking about it. Shout out to AR. Shout out to Franco. Shout out to KO. Shout out to D-Live. Shout out to Artie. Shout out to Devon. That's, and shout out to Steve. That's our Monster A&R A-team. And that's a team that consists of Monster A&R members around the world. So let me go on down that list again. Shout out to D-Live, who's in Germany. Shout out to KO, who's in Georgia. Shout out to Devon, who's local. He's in, he's in San Bernardino. Shout out to Artie, who's in Irvine. Shout out to Franco, who's in Arizona. And shout out to AR, who is in Pennsylvania. You know what I'm saying? So we got an A-team of Monster A&R producers that are all over the world, and we are working on a lot of dope stuff, and I look forward to showing that to y'all. You know what I'm saying? We working. And once all this stuff like, you know, lets up with the COVID-19, we'll be back on our producer songwriter camps. We're about to do online classes. We're about to open up Monster A&R back up so that new members can join. A lot of people have been DMing me trying to figure out how they can join Monster A&R. Just be patient June 1st. The relaunch, we let more people in. We just wanted to make sure that we had a platform that was dope for anybody that joins, you know what I'm saying? So those are my thoughts. I look forward to sharing raw thoughts like this again. Hopefully I don't got to edit this video, uh, but put y'all comments in the video, like the video, share the video. And you know, if y'all ever talk to internet money, let them know, much respect, keep doing y'all thing. You know what I'm saying? I'll holler at y'all later, peace. <laughs>